I'm going to, uh, for those who aren't on live and will be watching this later, I'm going to start the video off by saying that I've got a huge, huge warning on this video, and this is for people watching live and for people who will be watching later. If you are religiously tied to your religion in any way, or you are not ready for this answer to be revealed to you, I encourage everybody to exit off the video, whether you're on live or watching later. I'm giving everybody beyond enough warning to where you guys can exit off. Um, I'm going to be comparing and making a lot of references to the Matrix movies. There isn't one good video that's indefinitely defying what the red pill represents, nor what the Matrix is. There's not one video. And I'm talking that accurately is defining what they are. And what I'm going to do is make it very clear, but not everybody is ready for this answer. Not everybody wants to be presented with this, or not, not everybody needs this answer. And if you're not ready for it, or you don't need it, or want to be freed from this matrix, then this will shake you. This will scare you. And this is why I'm telling people right now, exit the video if you cannot handle it, if you're not ready for it. But throughout our lives, we're born, and we're, we're born knowing something in the back of our mind, subconsciously. What this something is that we know we can't put a name to, define, describe, or bring to any of the five senses. We can't describe it. We can't define it. And so we go through life in a search for something, and that something is in the back of our mind. We go through life exploring ourselves on a journey of self-discovery, which we're driven into this journey of self-discovery through the questions we have that we can't answer. Who are we? What are we? Why are we here? What's the purpose of life? These deep questions are what keeps us up at night, but this is not the subconscious aching in the back of our minds. And what the matrix is, is your conscious mind unaware of your subconsciousness. For instance, I'm Tyler Ugaldi. Me as Tyler Ugaldi, convinced beyond a doubt that this is who I am, when I'm living as Tyler, I'm living in the matrix. I'm a part of the material matrix world. The matrix is what we're creating of our conscious mind. For instance, when I go to work, I am Tyler. When I go to work and someone disrespects me or, or talks bad about me, I'm using an example here, I've got to defend myself because they're talking about Tyler. So me clinging to this defense, me clinging to this is me clinging to the matrix, to the material finite world. And this is you clinging to the ego. You have to defend yourself because you're the body. You're convinced you're the body. So you have to jump at any time that you have to defend yourself. This is you fully living in the matrix. You're unaware of your subconscious self. The answer to reality is we are living two identities. And like I said, if you are not ready for the answer, please back away because this will scare you. This is the matrix. You're living two identities simultaneously and you're not even aware of it. The same energy that, that's running through your, your blood, through your veins, that's telling your body to digest its food, that's telling you to breathe in and out constantly every day, that same constant flow of energy is the same constant flow of energy in the universe. The same constant su uh, flow of the sun rays that are being emitted. The same constant flow. It's constantly moving. The sun is you subconsciously doing that. In the same way, you're subconsciously telling your body to d d digest its food. The way you're subconsciously telling your body to keep the blood flowing, keep your heart pumping. These are all subconsciously you. You're doing that. You're making your body digest the food. You're making your body breathe. You're making the blood flow. This is all you, subconsciously. And when you connect the micro to the macro, you realize that all is subconsciously you doing this. The sun rises every day because it's you doing this subconsciously. You are one being, one playing of energy. 
It's hilarious when you don't get it. It's only funny if you're a part of the Matrix. If you're a part of the Matrix, then this is hilarious to you. I get it. I fully get it, how absurd it sounds. I guarantee you when I'm done reading what I'm reading, that smile and that laugh will be gone. Those who make fun of and throw names at people are simply defending their matrix. They're defending their realities that they've created for themselves in their mind. And so you have to call names. You have to defend the ego and the matrix that you've created for yourself because it's at risk. You're not ready to det detach from the ego and from the matrix, and so you have to defend this matrix. You have to defend the ego. And this is why people call names or get so angry, like you're dumb, you're stupid, this, that. They're simply defending the, what they have known their whole lives, and that is the matrix. This finite being skin, when we go to work, when we turn on our TVs, just like he says in the movie, we are a part of the matrix. Our mind is not conscious or subconsciously aware are consciously aware of our subconscious. The taking of the red pill is you joining the subconscious with the conscious mind. The taking of the red pill is you becoming aware of what your subconscious already knows. And what your subconscious already knows is that aching in the back of your mind every single day that's keeping you awake at night. That aching in the back of your mind is your subconscious you trying to wake up the conscious you. The conscious you is the Neo. Neo in the very beginning of the Matrix. There's something he knows, and he knows it's called the Matrix, but he knows nothing of it. And this something that Neo knows is what drives him to find Morpheus. The something that he is knowing is the subconscious part of him. And what drives him to Morpheus is the answer. And when he takes that red pill, it's the joining of his subconscious with his conscious mind. He's being shown that he is the Matrix. The Matrix is you. The Matrix is only your conscious mind. When you exist outside of the Matrix, it's because you've connected your subconscious with your conscious mind. Therefore, you are liberated from the material world. You are free from the Matrix. You're no longer a slave to the material world. You're no longer living as this identity. I don't have to defend myself and rush to people that are talking bad about my name every single time I hear somebody at work saying something bad about me. Why? I'm not a, a, a slave to the Matrix. I'm not living through Tyler. I've fully awakened and realized who I am. I've realized that this matrix I was clinging on to was me clinging on to the body, the finite self. And when you're not ready to let go of the ego, which is your body, you'll reject it. You'll reject that this is true. You'll reject that it's you the whole time. You'll reject that you have two identities. But ask yourself, what is it inside of you that's consciously aware that you're thinking at all? What in you is aware that you're thinking at all? other than yourself. I'm going to read at least three or four pages from the book I'm writing and working on. And I, I greatly, greatly hope people take something from this. People get something out of this. This is basically my entire life journey into a book. And this is why I recently said my entire search for everything, my life's work is complete. Why? Because I've escaped the matrix. I kept thinking I had to figure out new things and new things and new things about the earth and the world and all this stuff. And this is what I'm about to cover. Eventually you realize when you try and beat it, which is you beating yourself, when you try and beat it, which is God, whatever you're trying to beat, when you try to think past what God is, you're going to overthink the equation every single time because you're using pure logic. And you cannot use pure logic because when you use pure logic in trying to figure out who you are, you convince yourself beyond a doubt that you are logically none other than the body. You can't be anything logically other than the body. And so this is why I stress if you're trying to overthink the equation, you will. You will overthink yourself. 
because this is was this was my premise of, on everything. This was my view. Logically, I couldn't be anything other than myself, other than me. Why? Because I was stuck in the ego. I didn't realize what it meant that we weren't the body. I didn't get what that meant. It's easy to say things out loud and not have any idea of what you're saying. And this was it. I kept saying, I'm not the body, I'm the spirit, and I'm the spirit, but I didn't know what I was saying. And so I will read this for, for those who want to hear. <clears throat> Eventually, you will find that no matter how much knowledge is acquired, one will still have this aching something in the back of their mind until they come to the realization that you can't define it because it was you the entire time pretending subconsciously that you're not. And this is the very nature of being it. Some spend their entire lives, me, for example, I've spent 20 years, 20 years, driving myself mad just to get to this answer. Some spend their entire lives trying to define or find what this ache in the back of their mind is that hounds them and drives them into a pursuit of self-discovery. And once you begin an honest pursuit, you come to this very inevitable realization. It is you the whole time, but you, are, you have two completely different realizations of yourself. One you're subconsciously aware of, the other you're consciously aware of. And in this split duel of realizations, we begin playing the game of life with our own self. When you realize this, you laugh so hard seeing as it's you the whole time and you've only fooled yourself but again. The conscious mind that clings to the ego is the role of you that's pretending you're not it. The subconscious mind that already knows you're it is the real role of you that speaks to you through the universe and is trying to wake up and connect your conscious mind to the subconscious spirit. As many ph famous philosophers have said, Tesla in quotes being one, connecting your mind to the source. The source is the subconscious. When I was reading this to myself long before, I was picturing source outside of myself. Source was at the center of our earth. Source was at the center of our universe. And this is where I was casting our source out as. The source wasn't being put in my own self. Okay? So as many philosophers have said, connecting your mind to the source, the subconscious. In the Matrix movie, there is a famous scene in which Morpheus meets Neo and is basically symbolizing the connection between the conscious and subconscious. At one point, he even flips out and after Morpheus presents him with the truth he's been searching for his whole life, Neo says, no, I don't believe it. It's not possible. Morpheus then says, I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Neo then panics and says, stop, let me out, let me out, I want out. It is in this moment that he is finding out he is in a matrix and he is the avatar of the matrix, the chosen one. Okay. I'm going to read this out loud. I wrote down the entire Matrix conversation when he's presenting him with the pills because this is a vital part of, of information. This is all symbolizing something greater than. And as I said, it's the, it's, the form, it's the combining of the conscious and subconscious minds when you're becoming aware that you have two identities. And this is what is, this is about. I even, I even wrote my own analysis on it. But here... I'll read this for people, even though I'm sure that they've all re seen The Matrix millions of times. <clears throat> so he says, let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Neo answers, The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us, even now in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth, Neo asks? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you are born into bondage, born into a prison that you can't smell or taste or touch, a prison for your mind. 
Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Now, this entire dialogue is speaking about and referring to the very same thing I'm talking about. Neo being the conscious and curious you that is born free feeling as if something is out of order or that you know something greater than anything you can define. Something you can't describe or even try putting into words, which is why it remains in the back of your mind but aches it like a splinter, just as he says. It is this something that brings Neo to Morpheus, in the same way one waking up would visit a guru. Neo is aware of this matrix but doesn't know what it is, and, if, and you notice they're always defining it as something or it. And then Morpheus names a few things we as people do on a daily basis that is normal to the system, such as going to work, church, paying taxes, or watching TV. This very system, which has become normal, is the very prison for your mind he is talking about. This financial, material world that we get lost and consumed by is what keeps us stuck and clinging to this very system and ego. We are slaves in the sense that our minds have been born into the bondage of this delusional system we consider as normal today. As I previously said, we have two realizations of ourself. One is the conscious mind that one is the conscious mind that in which is part of this matrix system and the other is the subconscious mind that's trying to get your conscious mind to realize this truth. This is the splinter in the back of your minds. And just as he says, one can't be told what the matrix is. They have to see it for themselves. But basically what I'm trying to do is show people through words. I'm trying to make this as clear as possible for people who don't want to experience DMT. Because once DMT is like the red pill. Once you take it, you're in and you're, you're no coming out. No coming back. Not everybody wants that. Not everybody's ready for that. So what I'm trying to do is put it into words. Which is pretty damn hard to do. Okay, and this is where I said, just as he says, no one can be told what the Matrix is, they have to see it for themselves. This is where I believe they are referring to DMT, the spiritual molecule. He offers him two choices, a blue pill, which would be us choosing not to know where it, or the red pill, which leads, to us, leads us to the inevitable truth and realization that you are it. But he warns him, once you become aware of this and go down the rabbit hole, DMT, there is no going back or forgetting. When you're being shown this through a trip, you may in the beginning try to de deny or reject it like Neo first does, but it shakes you down and brings you to acceptance when you stop trying to fight it and run. Look down any vortex and what you see is singularity. This inevitable fact is what we choose not to see by pretending we're not it. This reality is the most complex game of hide-and-seek, and it's one being of energy playing this game with itself. Not his self, not herself, but itself. This energy or life force behind consciousness is what we're giving the name God. The deeper you stare at something, the more you realize that everything you're seeing and taking in is that in which you're trying to define. The analyzation and understanding of things is us being it and playing at this game as if we're not. And this is the very reason no man, woman, no man or woman can ever explain to you what consciousness is, because it is literally that. This is the very nature of being it. To experience, play with, pretend, and find ourselves through the journey of life. This fact is the great awakening so many people try to define and speak of. We think of our existence only from the inside out because we're on the inside trying to find a way out. We, we're aware of our inevitable doom, that everything in the, is in the process of dying every minute, and so we get scared and think back into death, because our finite being isn't aware of its existence outside the ego or the body. Our finite being gets frightened when asking why anything exists at all, because we can't answer it. We can't understand why we're living to die, because in the mind of the ego, death is the end. 
but the subconscious spirit knows otherwise, that death is not the end, but the playing of the on and off system of energy. Just as you can't have a baby without the joining of the two opposites, it takes these two opposites to remain in balance to make reality work. The yin and yang principle is the only way. Where you have light, you must have dark. Where you have space, you must have solid. Just as that not being anything around produces the sun produces something the same way sound comes out of silence and allness comes out of nowhere. And real quick, this so this is the great awakening most people are talking about. When people are talking about stages of awakening or we're giving ourselves illusionary stages of awakening, like when, for instance, oh, you're aware of 9-11, but are you aware of this? And then are you aware of this and this? We're giving ourselves illusionary stages of awakening but none of this, this is why I said, you can acquire all this knowledge, but none of this is the aching in the back of your mind. And it took me realizing this, 20 years of driving myself insane. And when I say insane, I mean literally insane. 20 years it took me to realize this. And this is why I'm trying to get it out to others. I put my warnings on it because not everybody needs to know this. Just like in, Morphe in Matri Matrix, the Morpheus says... Not everybody needs to be freed, and not everybody can handle being freed from the matrix. The only ones who should be freed are those who want this knowledge, those who want to be freed mentally. As he's saying, you're inside, you're born into a mental matrix. This prison is the world that's been pulled over us. The world around us is keeping us trapped, thinking we are this body, thinking we are the ego. Any store, any commercial, any TV, anywhere you go is reminding you that you are the body. It's making you forget the subconscious. It's pulling you deeper into the matrix. And this subconscious knowing that we are it the entire time, what we're labeling as God or the devil is you the entire time. And the battle of angels and demons is the metaphoric battle of your own mind, of the conscious user. That's why you have a conscience. The battle between angels and demons is that of the conscience. This is the great, the great awakening that everyone seeks. We only think that we're trying to debunk government conspiracies and that we're trying to debunk the earth or the universe, but this is not it. I know this because I've been there. I, I debunked the government crap. And then I moved on and said, you know what? This still I still have this aching in my head. Maybe if I try something else more complex. So I moved on to something more complex. Physics. Quantum physics. Field theories. All type of shit. I realized eventually again. I understood our entire universe. Based on magnetodielectricity. I could break it down for everybody. Logically. Very simple. But even then, you still realize there's still an aching in the back of your mind. Even this didn't do it. And finally, I hit a dead end. I hit a dead end. This is where I literally started going insane. I realized that there's not anything I can learn in this world that's going to fill this subconscious void in the back of my head. And this is where I finally gave in and started experimenting with DMT and shrooms. Because, and I always said I was terrified to do DMT, but I was literally at the point of insanity. People don't get what I mean by that. I mean literal insanity. Driving my own self mad because I could not get past this barrier. And the only barrier that was there was myself. The great awakening is simply realizing you're it. The red pill that the Matrix is speaking of is speaking of just that. Once you take the red pill and realize you are God, you're everything you've been praying to, everything you've been hoping for after this. Once you take that red pill, you can't come back. And this is what they're metaphorically telling you. Another person laughing. That's another person not ready to accept the reality. 
not ready to accept that they are in their own matrix. Like I said, it's only funny when you're unaware. But the only reason I resorted to DMT was because I was at the brink of insanity. I was at a dead end mentally. And like I said, if you're trying, I was thinking of everything through pure logic. Pure logic. So this is why I stress, if you are in your pursuit of this awakening and you're trying to outthink whatever you're trying to do, you're trying to outthink it or use pure logic, you will overthink the equation every time. You will overthink it because as I said, I was analyzing it from pure logic and from pure logic, you see that you can't be anything other than the body. You're, you, you are you and nobody can tell you that you aren't. If I were to message any one of you your names and tell you that that's not who you are, you guys would probably say I was an idiot or I was crazy. Okay, back to back to my reading. Exactly, not logic alone. You need both. You need your intuitive subconscious mind and you need the logic both to combine. When you combine both of those, the answer is literally staring at you in the face that it's you the entire time. Look up Michelangelo's um um Michelangelo's painting of God touching Adam with his finger. Look at Michelangelo's painting with God making Adam, the conceiving of Adam, right? God's reaching out to Adam's finger to touch it. What nobody notices in that painting is God and the angels are inside of a human brain. God is depicted inside of a brain. Why? Because you are. Anyone who is conscious is God, is the I am, is the creator. You're the devil and you're God at the same time. And your conscience is your heaven or hell, is your angel or demon. You choose that. That's why you are I am. And what we don't realize, I'll, I'll say this too, is just as you are God, you are the devil. So there is no one e more evil than man. Man is as evil as it gets. Why do we think no one can stop us from taking a life? We always say, oh, well, only God has the right to take life. You are God. Why do you think nothing stops you from taking a life? Why do you think nothing stops you from doing the highest, most, most highest form of evil? Nothing can stop you from doing that because you are that. Don't you realize that? Nothing is stopping you from committing the highest act of evil because you are the highest acts of evil, just as you are the highest acts of love. You choose this. You're God, you're the devil. And when you realize this, you realize the true power of both because you realize there's nothing stopping you. You are both. And this is why so many men go corrupted. So many men in government go corrupt because they're aware of this already. They know there's no God. You are God. And you're also the devil. And they're aware of this. And this is why they know nothing can stop them from taking life, from depopulating half the earth. We're the God and we're the devil. And this is the pure power of free will. This is free will. You have the free will to be God and manifest heaven. You have the free will to be the devil and manifest hell. All is you. But just as they say, everything requires a balance. You can't have too much of one or too much of another. But this is one thing people forget. We think, well, oh, God, God's going to punish him for killing that person. That person just committed the highest act of evil. Take, he took a life. This is what's, this should make it obvious. Only God can take a life because we are. We are that. That's why there's nothing stopping you from doing this. 
you are the creator. You have free will to literally be God or be the devil. You can give life and, and give love, or you can take a life and give hate. You have the ultimate power because you are both. You are both entities. Okay, so I'm going to go back to reading this here for a little bit. The more you search, the more you ask, the more you wonder, the more you overthink the entire situation. What we do is invent our own elaborate system into tricking ourselves that we aren't it. We delay and prolong this inevitable fact because either we're not ready to be shown or haven't put yourself through enough mental f tests yet. But eventually, one day, you will connect the mental dots you've noted and had your whole life. It will be in this moment of self-realization that at last you're admitting to yourself who you really are. From there, all else becomes clear. From the questions you hold to the very voice in your head, you are it. And that all this is a constant game of tag. Now you're it in this skin, now you're not. Birth, death. And this is the flow of the matrix. It is constant and will never give out, to infinity and beyond. You're either playing as the character in the skin, or as the character beyond the skin, which is pure energy. And this is why when you find this out, people will gravitate and be drawn toward you. When you find this enlightenment within you, you no longer search for it outside yourself, but reflect it outside yourself for others. And trust me, people can tell by your uncontrollable joy and excitement for absolutely no reason. Just like a child jumping around an empty room having the time of their lives. This is pureness. Eventually you see what you've been calling God is this very being here and now, and that you've only been fooling yourself the whole time. This is when it all becomes pure again. All life is one energetic flowing of what we've been calling God becoming consciously aware of itself. And this is why we're born subconsciously already knowing of something, but that something isn't clear to the conscious mind unfolding and learning itself again. We're the role player of two beings, both willingly and unwillingly. One player is our temporary being known as the microcosm. The other is our infinite being of pure flowing and evolving energy known as the macrocosm. But the two are the one and the same. Just as your eye reflects light, the stars above light the sky. Both energies and phenomenon are both you. It just goes back to conscious and subconscious. One is us aware of what we're doing, the other is unawarely doing something, but is still us that's doing it, is it not? So the same way your blood flow is constantly, constant subconsciously, so is the continuous stream of water down the slope or the continuous beams of light emitted by the sun. All is you the whole time, subconsciously. And therefore... You are the creator and the one being of I am. In the Bible, they refer to God as I am. When Moses spoke to God, which was his inner self, he said, What shall I say to the people when I tell them God has sent me? And they ask his name. The answer he was given is, I am who I am. When you connect to something or it I've been referring to as God, you realize that I am is the very other face of consciousness. Just as this energy has two faces, it has two of everything else, which is the balance throughout reality. Without one, the other isn't possible, which means the whole isn't possible. To get a full circle, you can't just have above. You need a below as well. The other half to that makes up the whole. So just as you're subconsciously everything in one being, you're also consciously forgetting this through the mind of the conscious I am. So let me say that again. Just as you're subconsciously everything in one being, you're also consciously forgetting this through the mind of the conscious I am. And this is why I say this is the great awakening. Realizing you're, you're living and playing the role of two identities, both willingly and unwillingly.
And what you have to accept eventually, and this is why I say you can run from it your entire life, but sometime or another when you're on your deathbed or you're seeing the light or you're having a near-death experience, you will experience this and you will have no choice but to face this inevitability of yourself. And this is why I've called this the prolonging inevitability of one. Because it's during your death or during near death that you see this as well. You see the inevitability of yourself. It is you the entire time and you've only been playing with your own self. You've forgotten who you are consciously when you were born. Because that's not who you are. You are the subconscious. And this is what Neo is finding out when he takes the red pill. This is what Neo is re trying to reject and says, no, I want out. He doesn't want this. That's not the answer he was looking for. Whether it's the answer we want or not, this is the undeniable truth. Not everybody wants to accept that this is what it is. Some people want the idea that when we die, we, we have a spirit in this form that breaks off and this is who we are. Some people want that rea the reality. Some people need that reality. And it's vital to know the difference between those who need it and want it and don't want it. Not everybody needs to be free and liberated from the matrix. So, you're both beings at the same time because they're both one. One is physical, the other is beyond that, but both are you. Just as you're the off face to this system, you're the on face to this system. Life and death is you through your own energetic design. You are the God or light principle through conscious intent and manifestation, just as you are the beast or dark principle through conscious intent and manifestation. That is why you have a conscience, and as I previously stated, this is the metaphoric battle between angels and demons, the dancing of these two energies back and forth. It's never all one or the other. Just as a movie shows you, the hero doesn't win the whole movie. There has to be a playing of both energies. There has to be a tragedy to realize delight, death to appreciate life, hot to appreciate cold, and vice versa. We only don't appreciate death when we don't understand what it means to live. To live is what makes you embrace it all. Even the human pain and tears that remind us we're born doomed and are beautiful as they come, for it makes them the here and now as a human being accepted and seen through beauty because you are no longer see no longer see through fear but through wholeness you see that the end is never the end for you are that and will always be in one form or another all is you experiencing talking and playing with your own infinite being and this is why they say we never truly die due to our spirit but the raw truth is that spirit is not the one you see in the mirror, but everything in one forever. I've yet to hear another during my time in depth explain what God is beyond saying it's infinite or formless energy. From my understanding and understanding, it is simply the universe becoming aware of itself in a curious, conscious way through endless forms and perceptions. As I've said, all the universe is one continuous flowing of this energy, and just as it has a life and death phase, it has a conscious and subconscious phase, or conscious being. The subconscious phase is the spirit, the conscious is the ego or body which is everything the entire time, but is being fooled by your own subconscious self. As to who you are beyond the mirror image. And this is what we're picturing or labeling God, the two identities and playings of this, of this universe. All our conceptions as to who we are is just that and being it. Just as one could make an endless amount of shapes or patterns, is the very evolution and constant changing of the universe. We often find ourselves with an overload of thoughts before we sleep. This is due to us associating sleep with death. 
and so all our greatest, deepest, and most hidden thoughts of the not knowing drives us into a domino of thoughts all collapsing in around us at once. It is during the moments, the moments before we sleep, that all these thoughts come about because you're not being distracted or consumed by the material world. You're not at your job where your mind is busy with the nonsense there. You're not out with friends or on a phone or TV or anything outside yourself distracting you. And when you give yourself this time away, just as in the moments before you sleep, you realize your mind keeps leading back to itself. All these deep thoughts come into play because it is in these silent moments that we reflect on our life before bed, which, as I said, we associate with death. When you truly focus on these thoughts, you realize the inevitability you're prolonging with yourself. You're aware nothing is promised or forever, and so each time we sleep, we reflect on our thoughts of life, of existence, of where we go when we die, of who we are, of what life is, if heaven or hell is real, etc. These very thoughts are the very functions of being just that in which you're trying to define and answer with logic. Look up Michelangelo's famous painting of the creation of Adam. You'll notice God portrayed as the man in the middle on the right while extending his finger out to Adam, who is on the left. Around God are all these angels, but even more strangely, you'll notice that God and all the angels are inside of something. This is where the answer is a dead giveaway. They're inside what one can clearly tell to be a human brain. It has the same shape and design of one. When you understand that you are it, this is more of a laugh to yourself as to how you never noticed this or put two and two together. God is none other than the life force of consciousness and death, and He's inside the mind because He is you through your conscious experience. This is why we're born with so many naturally drawn questions of our existence. We're simply trying to understand ourselves. The awareness of the splitting of these two identities becomes forgotten at death, and so it's arranged that you come back again, a different physical you, to understand and put it all back together again. But no matter what the two are both you. Born finite in the skin, but are infinite through the spirit, slash life force, and this is what makes us infinite and one with all things. I've read far too much. I've read far too much already, but through that, if you've been watching from start to finish, you should have a, a, you should basically be at a wow moment. You should be slowly mentally detaching from the ego, but you can know all this and still not have a ideal image in your head of what I'm talking about or how to, how to visualize this. And this is where when you're ready when you're ready, everything I've just presented, let it sit in with you and marinate. But when you're ready, you will either come back, inbox me or whatever, or you will go to somebody and get you <clears throat> psychedelics, <clears throat> which is what I did. DMT, psilocybin, whatever. But... When you do DMT or psilocybin, it will confirm and show you everything I just told you. Everything I just read is from my trip, is from my 20 years of research as well. Connecting logic with spirit and realizing that when I was thinking pure logically, I overthought the entire equation. And this is where you need to combine both subconscious and logic to get your answer. And if you're going to get it on your own without DMT or, or psychedelics, you have to balance out logic and your subconscious. But just knowing with, with everything I've read gives you the answers verbally. The DMT is what will visually give you the answers. But everything I've just read in this video has is verbally giving you the answers, is verbally giving you the red pill. It's whether the, the listener wants to accept it or reject it. But as I said, those who reject it go back into the matrix. They're taking the blue pill. They're going back to their religion, back to their job, back to their life, back to everything they knew before they heard this video. And that's fine. 
I'm not pushing myself on anybody. I'm not putting anyone down. I'm simply explaining the matrix reference. And the matrix reference is that. When we go to work, when we play video games, when we do all these things that are normal, we're inside the matrix. Why? Because we're being made to think we're this body, made to think we're this image, and we can't be anything other than. And through all these small things that we do, go to the store, go here, go to church, play video games, we forget and don't have time to think of who we are. We're being kept into the matrix, kept into the outside world of, of everything. And that's why we have this aching every single night before we go to sleep of something. We feel like we know something greater than ourselves. We can't put it into words. And if you have this feeling, then you are trying to be free from the matrix. Whether you're aware of this or not, if you have this aching in the back of your mind, then your subconscious is screaming it wants you to be free. Your subconscious mind is screaming to let it out. But it all comes when you're ready. As I said, all is you the whole time. And these signs that we get from the universe are really signs from your subconscious self sending them to your conscious self. And this is why I say, when you connect the subconscious with the conscious, you become infinite. You become the one being. You become liberated from the matrix. You're no longer having to defend and cling to this very existence. I don't have to stress and worry myself with the world's problems. Oh, it's me against the world. The entire world hates me. Oh, the entire world wants to judge me. Oh, the entire world thinks I'm not good enough because I drive this car. The entire world sees my, my $30 shoes and makes fun of me. All these ideas are us keeping ourselves in the matrix. You realize at the end, none of it matters and you are not the being that you see. And when you realize this, you are liberated from the matrix. You no longer have to cling to the body. You no longer fear death. You no longer suffer from depression or anxiety or insomnia. All is alleviated. Why? All is alleviated because you're realizing it was you the entire time. You are the matrix. It's just a matter of being consciously aware of it or subconsciously aware of it. But I'm going to get off this video. I just wanted to spark a little flame, plant a little seeds, and, and just let people know if you're seeking the red pill, if you're seeking the undeniable truth, if you're ready for it, I can grant you that. I can lead you to the way. I can show you what your subconscious is trying to show you and what your subconscious knows. I can bring to it to light that aching in the back of your mind every single night. Why you're being kept up at night every every night. I can alleviate a lot of pains and struggles that I had to face over 20 years worth of stress and, and insomnia, anxiety, depression. All these, they ate me alive for 20 years because I let them. And so what I'm trying to do is alleviate all these pains and burdens for others who seek the same freedom, who seek the same liberation from their own self. And as I said, when you overthink it, you will never realize it is you the entire time. Because from a logic standpoint, you are only the body and you cannot be anything other than that. Logically. So thank you to everybody who's sharing this video, sharing my stuff, letting me speak on your profile, letting me be a, a, a voice on your platform. I'm, I'm grateful for everyone who um, supports me, encourages me, shares my stuff. I'm grateful for you. <clears throat> and... Um, I'm just trying to alleviate the pains. That's really it. Trying to make this process a whole lot easier for us. 
Because we are in a war right now, and the elites, what they're trying to do is keep us from remembering this inevitability. We all think the elites are trying to depopulate us and trying to do this and trying to do that. We have no idea, because we don't even know who we are. What they're doing is keeping us from ourselves. The elite, you can view as the Mr. Smiths of the Matrix. They're trying to keep us bound and into this Matrix. This is why they keep coming out with newer and improved video games and technology. To keep you trapped mentally. You will stay in the Matrix as long as they keep advancing. As long as they keep advancing with their tech, you will never be liberated from this Matrix. And the more they keep getting rid of books and other knowledge of this self-realization, this knowledge gets lost and lost and lost each day. And when you have a century go by, all this stuff is gone. And the people who are going to be around then are, will have no sources, nothing. This is the elite's agenda. To keep us stuck in the matrix forever as the finite mortal being. To hide the fact that we are God, that all that we have is here and now. But if you have any questions, please feel free to inbox me. I do video chats. I do one-on-ones. I do any type of, of one-on-one uh, messaging people need or ask for. I'm always available. Feel free to message me if you have any questions. And feel free to watch this back many times. The answers are all there. It's a matter of seeing them now.